why has Ginkgo still not provided very concrete guidance on downstream value share across many different quarterly updates and other types of press events or meetings in which Ginkgo Bioworks takes either questions from investors or even people who work from its company, which are the largest share, the largest uh, fraction of its investors. Many people have been asking questions pertaining to what would be the different profile for when various agreements could result in some downstream value share. And I think that some of those agreements, they've already been realized. And I think that, of course, that's a win, at least for the foundry business model, because it demonstrates some positive interactions that customers have had in which they have actually had some preliminary product go to market um, from experiments that were initially held at Ginkgo. What I really doubt is happening, though, as often is when Ginkgo is actually receiving some type of equity in the company when they launch on top of their platform. Like Jason had mentioned once that um, he, usually the company would take like maybe a 30% stake if the company launched their product on top of Ginkgo Bioworks Foundry platform. I, um, I really don't know if they have so many experiences of that. I know they probably have a couple just from a few years ago, but I don't really think that that type of that type of business transaction or that type of business interaction is really occurring that much. And I think that this goes to show that anything that they've been saying about downstream value share, because there has still been the recent change in the founder conditions that Jason has made, it's kind of like a pretty much a moot point at this point. Like even if they continue discussing it or talking about it, it's not really going to make a significant difference in the revenue or how they expect the negative the negative EBITDA that they have for the financial uh, performance metric uh, for, th for the profitability of their foundry and their business model. So with this in mind, it kind of demonstrates how a lot of the things that they have said with regards to either how the foundry business operation goes, what types of customers they can expect to, inter to attract from their foundry, as well as the fact that um, they had to make this change in the foundry business terms of agreement to uh, to avoid um, to avoid uh, to avoid having to um, participate in some downstream value share or royalty with some of their clients. It demonstrates that at least from the industrial biotech, as they've been saying, um, the probably the spending has been drawing up to a larger extent to what they've been trying to communicate to us because even Jason had admitted even a year, year and a half ago that they saw that there was some deficit or some growing tendency within industrial biotech to spend more money on outsourcing R&D rather than having to keep it primarily within their own facility or their, or their own walls, so to speak. And um, I think that that type of that type of decision to not allocate the R&D dollars to say Ginkgo Bioworks or someone else outside of a company, it's kind of seeming to happen more often, maybe in larger companies. Maybe in smaller companies, it can be a little bit different because they could still perform maybe some type of in silico directed evolution enzyme study, um, you know, outside, like maybe, um, maybe smaller companies because if they have to lay people off or they get rid of computationally minded people, they may not have that type of expertise any, any longer to, that would enable them to look at different types of compounds with, uh, with a screen that has a sufficient throughput. And um, the fact that uh, they still, uh, m like many people on the Ginkgo Board of Directors, they've been pretty much tossing around generalities for a long time with regards to when they really expect a major milestone payment to come off. It's kind of still maybe a little concerning because even the RNA Therapeutics um, business agreement that they have with Pfizer, that's obviously still going to take a while because even like Jason has said, and I agree with him on this, that it takes a really long time to even to be able to get that type of deal in the first place because you have to convince a pharmaceutical company that was even widely distributing vaccines during the pandemic that there has to be some some uh, capability that's of a completely higher throughput than whatever they have across many of their own facilities which as you know as Jason has alluded to for sure that's a win but the fact that it's still probably going to take several years when they're performing these mass layoffs now and they might be in more of a tough situation. It's just kind of difficult because even if, say, they wanted to continue burning down the cash further, they could lay off more people. And then that would just result in giving them more of a more of a cash cushion, so to speak, that would help them just maintain whatever whatever buildings and whatever other acquisitions that they had up to this point, like Bayer or Bear and um 
you know, the AI company and also Zymogen. So then it would probably make it easier for them to realize the payment for the royalty. But then it would just be more of a payment for the people who were actually higher up, who were never fired from Ginkgo Bioworks during any of the layoffs. And yeah, I just think that um, that type of style management maybe it probably won't bode well for so many people because who would want to go or move out or relocate for, say, the Biofab 1 facility or that new facility and have to maybe be potentially let go in the span of a couple of months if some business objectives aren't panned out. So it's just kind of funny how, you know, it kind of demonstrates how a lot of the information that maybe Ginkgo has been trying to tout or, you know, really brag about when it comes to its uh, its repertoire of different types of sequences and other types of data that it's gotten from companies that it's acquired isn't really maybe worth as much or isn't as valuable maybe to some customers as it could be because obviously when you do biology at the throughput that they're doing at and even synthetic biology on top of that a lot of times you're actually going to get complete you know a complete lack of possibilities that could actually perform some type of reaction that you want that a lot of customers are looking at because a lot of customers want to either optimize some metabolic pathway or they want to look at, inter, you know, optimizing the performance or interaction between enzymes. And uh, that can just be a difficult process in which maybe one rate limiting step in the whole interaction could actually prevent, um, uh, you know, an increased throughput from actually being able to provide any conclusion of value.